This morning, what I want to do is give you the instructions for the first jhana. It's actually too early to give you the instructions for the first jhana. Most people need a while to settle in, three, four, five days before things get quiet enough. But since everyone settles in at a different rate, there is no perfect time to give the instructions for the first jhana. So I'm going to give them to you now, and you'll know what they are. You'll have the map laid out for getting to the first jhana. And then as your practice deepens, you'll know what to do. So I mentioned last night that there's the necessity of generating access concentration. Sit yourself down in a, your comfortable upright posture and put your mind on your meditation object. Again, I'm going to use the breath this morning. I'll talk a little bit about metta. I'll talk about metta after I give the details for for working with the breath. And then I'll do a guided contemplation, guided meditation on the body scan in a few days. So in working with the breath, as I said last night, you want to work with the breath it's the most subtle place that works for you. If you can work with the breath of the nostrils, that'll get you the most concentration. If that's problematic, and it is for a lot of people, then work with the breath wherever seems to work the best. Rise and fall of the belly, rise and fall of the chest. You can use one of the five aids I talked about last night if you're feeling particularly distracted. If you use one of the aids, counting, visualizing a wave, a word or a pair of words like peace, love, or budo, parts of the breath or lengths of the breath, use it for, let's say, 15 to 20 minutes max, and then drop it. If it feels like you've gotten really concentrated before you're 15 to 20 minutes is up, feel free to drop the aid before that. When you drop the aid, it's going to feel at first like you've regressed. It's sort of like you're you're staggering along using a, a crutch or something. And finally, you get going with that, and then you let go of the crutch. And there's a little staggering as to you figure out the next thing, and then you're okay. It's the same with one of these aids. So you use the aid to get yourself settled, but it can't take you all the way to access concentration. As long as you're using the aid for supporting your concentration, it's not going to be enough concentration for you to get to the jhana. So it's going to be necessary to drop it. Yeah, let it go. And then just work with the tactile sensations of your breathing. As I said last night, you get distracted. It's not a big deal. Label the distraction, relax, and come back. And you just that's your strategy, whether you're using the aid or not, is, yeah, recognize the distraction, relax, and come back, all with an attitude of relaxed diligence. Now, hopefully at some point, and I don't know when that will be, it could be tomorrow, the next day, could take five days. At some point, you'll find that you're just with your breathing and not getting distracted. It's really settled in. If there are thoughts, they're wispy and in the background and not pulling you off into distraction. This is access concentration. You want to stay there for, well, I say five to 10 to 15 minutes. I know that's a real nebulous amount of time. It's part of it's because when you're that concentrated, your sense of time just doesn't work. (laughs) You can't tell how long things are happening or anything like that. So five to 10 to 15 minutes, stay there for a while. So recognize, yeah, okay, it's settled. I'm not getting distracted. Stay there for a while. The most common problem with learning the jhanas is what I call jumping too soon. I followed four breaths in a row. This must be it, right? And attempt to jump into the jhana. It doesn't work. 
Of course, the other problem is staying too long until you just get tired of meditating and you, you just stuck with the breath the whole time. So middle way as always. You're, you've arrived at access concentration. You've recognized this is access concentration and you're staying there rather, rather well for an extended period. It's possible that while you're there, you may get a sign of good concentration, which is a diffuse white light that shows up. It's sort of like you're sitting in a dark room and the sun comes out and it just gets brighter. Or you're sitting in a dark room and somebody starts inching up the dimmer switch and it's just getting brighter. If you open your eyes to see what's going on, you just messed up your concentration. So don't do that. It's just a sign of good concentration. Your mind is quieting down and there are more random firings happening in your brain, including your visual cortex. And so the random visual cortex firings are visual. And you see it as a diffuse white light. There's nothing to do with it. It's just a sign entering Concentrationville. I mean, you drive into town, it says entering city limits. You don't have to stop your car, get out, pull up the sign, throw it in your trunk. You just know where you are. It's the same thing if you get the diffuse white light. Some people get the diffuse white light every time. Some people never get the diffuse white light, no matter how concentrated they get. Most people get it sometimes and sometimes they don't. So if it doesn't show up, it doesn't mean anything. If it does show up, it means, yeah, your concentration is pretty good. Another possible sign of good concentration is that your breath begins to get really shallow. You're having trouble actually detecting the tactile sensations. The temptation is to take a really deep breath and get it going again. And this is exactly the wrong thing to do. Taking a deep breath will actually take you away from the first jhana. So what you want to do is just be with whatever it is you've got. Don't worry about it. If you can still tell whether it's an in-breath or an out-breath, then you're fine. But even if you're not able to tell how you're able to tell it's an in-breath or an out-breath, often what people find is there's still a touch sensation on the in-breath, but they're having trouble picking up the out-breath, for example. And if that's the case, just leave your attention pointed at the place where you're feeling the breath still. If the breath disappears and you really can't get any tactile sensations at all, just leave your attention focused on the spot where you were getting the tactile sensations. As long as you can tell whether it's an in-breath or an out-breath, it'll work just fine. Now, if the breath disappears completely, then you're gonna to have to do something else. And there's a trick. And the trick is the same thing to do if you've been with access concentration for the 5, 10, 15 minutes. And the trick is to switch your attention away from the breath to a pleasant sensation. So you might be wondering, what pleasant sensation? Well, if you can bear to smile when you meditate, then you only have to shift your attention one inch from your nostrils to the smile, assuming you're observing your breath at the nostrils. And put your attention on the pleasantness of the smile. It doesn't need to be a big grin. It, it's just got to be a little bit more than neutral. Put, put the fake smile on your face when you sit down. When you notice it, it's disappeared, put it back. By the time you get to access concentration, it will start to feel genuine. And then when you make the shift from your breath to the smile, you've got something to focus on. Now, the smile, when it works, works really well. But it doesn't work for everyone. The most common place people find a pleasant sensation is the hands. 
So you put your attention on the pleasant sensation in your hands. And you just focus on enjoying the pleasantness. If you're using metta, often you'll get the pleasant sensation in the heart center. It's possible you could get it in the third eye, top of the head, top of the shoulders, soles of your feet. You name a body part, I've had some student find a pleasant sensation that they could focus on in that body part. So sit down, comfortable upright posture, put your attention on the breathing. When you get distracted, label, relax, come back. Keep doing that till you hit access. Access, you're fully with the object of meditation. And thoughts, if they're there, are in the background and not pulling you off into distraction. Stay at access for 5 to 10 to 15 minutes or until the breath disappears completely. And then switch your attention to a pleasant sensation. Smile, hands, heart, third eye, whatever. And then comes the really difficult part. Do nothing else. Just stay focused on enjoying the pleasantness of the pleasant sensation. By the pleasantness of the pleasant sensation, if somebody were to ask you, is that sensation pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral? And you say it's pleasant. Well, how did you know it was pleasant? Whatever enabled you to know that it's pleasant is what you are to be focused on. The pleasant sensation doesn't have to be strongly pleasant. It just got to be pleasant and it's got to be steady, continuing to be pleasant. And you're just focused your full attention on it. Now, because your full attention is focused on it, it means you're completely ignoring the breath. Forget about the breath. The breath is the key. It's to get you to access concentration. It's like when you come home, you pull out your key, you open the door. Now, do you walk around with a key in your hand now that you're home? Uh, you're fixing supper. Yeah, you got your key. You're watching TV. You got your key. No, of course not. You, you, it did its job. You put it down. You put it in your pocket, whatever you do with your keys, right? Same thing with the breath. Once you make the switch to the pleasant sensation, forget about the breath. Now, I know that's ridiculous for me to say, because you've been working for all these many hours, days, whatever, trying to be with the breath. And now that you can finally be with the breath, I tell you, forget about the breath. Yep, it's hard. Sorry. But that's what's necessary. What's necessary is not so much the forgetting about the breath, but to giving your full attention to the enjoying the pleasantness of the pleasant sensation. Yep, the breath is going to be there. Leave it as far in the background as possible. If your mind wanders off to it, get back to the pleasant sensation as quickly as you can. And do nothing else but just enjoy the pleasant sensation. If you can do that, eventually the pleasant sensation will increase a bit in intensity. Not much, but a bit. If you just keep enjoying it, it'll get a little stronger. And then a little stronger and a little stronger and a little stronger until suddenly it erupts into an altered state of consciousness full of, well, the usual translation is rapture and happiness. Rapture is a translation of piti. I've seen it translated as rapture, euphoria, ecstasy, delight. Glee is my favorite translation. It's a, it's a release of hopefully pleasant physical energy, an uprush of energy. And it's accompanied by the happiness, which is a translation of sukha, which is the opposite of dukkha. So sukha could be joy or happiness. So you're focused on the pleasant sensation. It slowly increases and suddenly it erupts into glee and joy. For some people, the PT is very intense. For others, it's mild. For some, it's sort of euphoria. For others, it might be rapture. I mean, there's a whole variety of ways it can manifest. Don't worry if yours, it doesn't match your idea of what it should be like. 
but it's it's an energetic release and it generally tends to seem to have an up direction to it and hopefully it's accompanied by a sense of happiness joy that's what you focus on if the pt is too strong or if you've just had enough of it then you can take a deep breath and really let the energy out and focus on just the happiness. That will take you towards the second jhana. The amount of time you would stay in the first jhana would be inversely proportional to the strength of the PT. In other words, if it's really intense, you don't need to stay long. 30 seconds might be enough. If it's mild, you might stay there five to 10 minutes. I wouldn't stay more than 10 minutes ever. Uh, I mean, you don't get energy for free. And so if you stay a long time, it'll wear you out. If you get into PT right before going to bed, yeah, you'll probably have insomnia because it'll wire you up. So it's actually pretty simple. Sit down, put your attention on your meditation object when you get distracted, label the distraction, relax, come back, repeat until you get to access concentration, stay at access concentration for a while, Shift your attention to a pleasant sensation. Do nothing else. The first jhana comes and finds you. Pretty simple to say. It's a lot harder to do. And there are, there are problems that can arise along the way. One of these is, I said, jumping too soon. You're not really concentrated enough when you jump on the pleasant sensation. If that's what happens, you find yourself getting distracted. Okay, you got distracted from the pleasant sensation, come back to the pleasant sensation. You don't need to label, but do relax and come back to the pleasant. If this is happening repeatedly, yeah, you didn't stay long enough in access concentration. It's also possible you're at the pleasant sensation and you get distracted. And when you come back, no pleasant sensation left. Well, then you have to go back to the breath or whatever your object was. And again, this is because the access concentration wasn't strong enough. These are quite common. Another problem is that the pleasant sensation is just sitting there and you try and help it. Uh, you don't know how to help it. <laughs> so by trying to help it, you make it go away. That doesn't work. Or it starts increasing and you get excited. Oh, it's increasing, which of course makes it go away. This is really about becoming a human being as opposed to a human doing. You be with the breath until you're at access. And then you be with access for a while. And then you be with the pleasant sensation. And yeah, it all takes care of itself rather than you having to do anything. When the jhana comes on, it's enough of an altered state that you realize, oh yeah, this is different. And as I said, you can stay there for as long as is comfortable, up to a maximum of 10 minutes. But yeah, five to 10 minutes, if it's mild, is probably enough. And if it's really intense, 30 seconds could be enough. And you just take a deep breath, really let the energy out and move your attention to the emotional state of happiness. What you're trying to do is set up a positive feedback loop. You know, positive feedback loop. So if this is a microphone and I hold it up to the speaker, it'll start making that awful noise. What's happening is the ambient noise in the room is coming into the microphone, going through the amplifier and coming out of the speaker louder and then back into the microphone and through the amplifier and coming out louder still, and it's a positive feedback loop. We're trying to do the exact same thing, only not with noise, but with pleasure. You hold your attention up to the pleasure, and it's pleasant. It's pleasant being focused on pleasure. And that's nice, which adds a little more pleasure to the experience. Well, the fact that it added a little more pleasure to the experience, that's pleasant, which adds a little more pleasure to the experience. 
you get the picture and, and then it just keeps getting more intense until it takes you into this altered state of rapture and happiness, glee and joy. It's almost like your mind is a, a, a pool of water. Normally there's lots of waves, that's all your distractions. But as you get quieter, it settles down. Now you're at access concentration, let it get really settled. And then you drop in a pebble of pleasure and it sends out waves that radiate out to the side and bounce off, I guess, the sides of your skull. And when they come back, they reinforce. But because this isn't a real physical system, if you don't disturb it, you'll go and bounce again and come back and reinforce some more until when they come, they reinforce and it turns into a geyser of PT and Sukha and you're off to the first jhana. All right, questions, comments. But I have a very strong pleasant sensation already in my, in my mouth, which is not uncommon. Is it okay just to let that be the object and, and not necessarily about jhana, but just as a, just use that. It's possible to do that. I mean, it doesn't matter what you focus on as long as you can focus on it without distraction. Mm -hmm. If it's already pleasant, well, that's even better because yeah. you don't have to do anything, but just stay with it. And then the jhana hopefully will show up all on its own without you having to do anything. The key thing is that it's something that you're not cheating by trying to make it happen. I mean, the breath that you're observing is just a natural breath. You're not taking deeper breaths, so it's easier to observe and so forth. And the same thing with this in your mouth. I mean, if it's if it feels pleasant because you're wiggling your tongue around, it's not going to work. But if it's just there and it's pleasant and you focus on it without distraction, yeah, it'll work just fine. Focusing on pleasure. Honestly, it sounds like a bad idea. So the first suggestion I would say is that the Buddha repeatedly talked about the necessity of having joy in your practice. He talked about pamoja, that's worldly joy, that's the pleasure you're focusing on. He talked about piti, that's a physical rush of pleasure. And he talked about sukha, and that's the meditative pleasure, the joy, happiness. PT is one of the seven factors of awakening. So <laughs> you don't get there without PT, right? So you've, you've really got to have the positive mind state. Getting attached to pleasure, well, it doesn't matter what you're getting attached to. It's the attachment that's the problem rather than the object. So focusing on pleasure is the way to generate the PT. The purpose of generating the PT is to generate the sukha. The sukha is the, the real key ingredient for getting into the jhanas. If it was dangerous to focus on pleasure, I'd be dead by now. Okay, because I've been doing this for a long time. If it takes you in the wrong direction, I mean, it's possible it could because you're just lost in the pleasure. But most people, if they start stumbling into the jhanas, they eventually get to the point of, come on, there's got to be more to it than this. I mean, I know this from personal experience. I stumbled into the first jhana on my second retreat at Ajahn Buddha Dasa's place in Thailand. It was great. I'm hitting this rapture estate once a day. And then finally, towards the end, twice a day. This is great. My meditation was really good. And then after uh, probably less than a year, it's like, it's about six months. It's like, uh, there's got to be more to this than just getting high. And so I started asking other teachers about it. But nobody knew what to do with it. Nobody could give me any advice. <laughs> the advice is, yeah, go on to the second jhana. But they didn't even know it was a jhana until I reconnected with Ayakema. So, yeah, the, the pleasure, the joy on the path is essential. I mean, the Buddha talks about this over and over again. The pleasure I'm saying focus on in Pali would be called pamoja, worldly pleasure. So this physical 
pleasure of you know, the smile or the hands or whatever. And then it will convert if you can set up that positive feedback loop into the PT and the PT will drag the sukha up with it. And now you're in the first jhana and you can move into second and subsequent jhanas. Yes, seeking pleasure maybe isn't good, but using pleasure when it's there, it's actually working. If you start seeking pleasure, it's not going to work because you're seeking. The problem is not the pleasure. The problem is the seeking. It's not that, for example, in the teaching of not self, it's not that we're identified with the wrong thing, the body, our mind, our consciousness. It's the act of identification that's wrong. And with the pleasure, it's the act of seeking that's wrong. Your, your body and your mind are not you. You don't get rid of your body and your mind because they're not you. You just don't identify with it. It's the same thing with the pleasure here. You just don't seek it. But it'll be there, hopefully, once you get concentrated sufficiently. Smile is a very pleasurable thing for me. So that's an easy one to go to. But hands also. And so should you choose which one you're going to focus on? Yeah, uh, learning the jhanas is trial and error. Actually, it's trial and error and error and error until I get it. But yeah, I would say sit down and decide, okay, I think I'm going to play with and then just pick one, the smile or the hands, if they're both pleasurable. And then when you get to access concentration, if one of them is obviously more pleasant, even though that was not the one you decided on, switch to the one that's obviously more pleasant. Otherwise, just go with the one you decided at the beginning. I would say use that every time until you find something that works and then just go with the one that works. Sit down and it's like, yeah, this time I think I'm going to use the hands. And then when you get to access, you can change your mind. But if there's no obvious difference, then go with the one you decided at the beginning. How does it feel in the chakras? Is it balanced? Yeah, people report that if they get strong PT, it runs up the spine. And some people have even reported it feels like it blasted through a blockage in some chakra. But other people don't ever mention any chakras or anything like that. I'd say it will just feel like there's energy running up through them if you're very aware of your chakras. If you're not really ever paying attention to your chakras, it's not likely to bring out uh, more awareness of them, though that's a slight possibility. But mostly it, it's just, oh, there's very strong energy here. And it's, it's yeah, it's mostly pleasant, although it's kind of intense. I mean, that's the, the usual way it goes. Not important to feel a sense of grounding? No, I would say that there isn't a sense of grounding in the first jhana. I wouldn't say you feel ungrounded. I would say that you there's just not a sense of feeling grounded at all. It's very much a, a whole up thing. When you drop into the second, you will feel more grounded, but you probably won't occur to you, oh, now I'm grounded. The groundedness really, the feeling of groundedness kicks in a bit in three and more in four. But again, unless you're looking to see how grounded am I, you might not even, it might not even occur to you to think about it. But the first jhana doesn't feel particularly grounded at all. I mean, it's very much, yeah, everything is up for most people. There's a huge variety. When I first started teaching and people would come report their experiences, it was like, wow, I, I don't experience it like that. So there's a huge variety, particularly in how the PT manifest in, in relation to the sukha in the first jhana. For some people, the PT smile, the sukha smile. For some people, the PT smile, the sukha is pretty strong. For some people, the PT is just off the charts and a little bit of sukha. And for some people, they're both pretty strong. 
And so it's that ratio of intensities and so forth. But it's all workable. I mean, the idea, get the PT going, so you'll get the sukha going because you're going to need the sukha in the second jhana and beyond. Yeah. What was the step just before access concentration? Just keep watching the breath. Just keep paying attention to your breathing. And if you get distracted, label, relax, and come back. So it's just mindfulness of breathing. And then it will turn into access concentration. You don't have to do anything. It's just that you'll stop getting distracted. If you want to use the metta practice for access concentration, what you would do would be sit down in your comfortable upright posture and do metta like you like doing metta. You can use the phrases, you can use the visualization like I did last night. It doesn't really matter. Just do metta for approximately half an hour. If after approximately a half an hour, you're not getting distracted, then drop the doing of the metta and look to see, do you have a pleasant sensation in the heart center? or anywhere else, but most people who do metta find a pleasant sensation in the heart center. Focus on that pleasant sensation. It might take you into the second jhana where there's very mild PT and stronger happiness. So instead of first jhana with a lot of PT and mild sukha, you got a little PT and you've got more happiness associated with the experience. So it's basically do the metta for half an hour, stop doing the metta, focus on the pleasantness of some physical sensation, look first for the heart center, and just stay with it until it just sort of melts into this state of happiness that sustains itself as long as you keep your attention on it. And then you'll be either in first or second jhana, depending on how much PT comes along with it. Just as a general, if there's any sort of rule of thumb or suggestion. So let's say we, I normally focus on the breath and I try to do access concentration for quite a while that way. But let's say it's frustrating or difficult. Is there some point at which I would then instead try to do switch to doing meta instead and try to use that as a path to generate access concentration? And then, you know, what, what would be the sort of rule of thumb around that? Yeah, I'd say when you sit down, decide what your access method is going to be. This is going to be breath or this is going to be metta. And that's it for this sit. You just do that access method for this sit. And if it doesn't work, okay, next sit. Do you want to try the same thing? You want to try something different. So basically make your decision at the beginning of the sit as to what the method is going to be and stick with it. It's often not the method it's the fact that, yeah, there's still more garbage needs to be taken out or you're too sleepy or you're too restless or whatever, rather than the method itself. Now, most people do find there is a method that they find works more reliably for them, given who they are. But that's a matter of experimentation. I would not switch methods during a sit. If the temptation there... Uh, is to switch methods during the sit. Yeah, it's probably not the method. During when you focusing on your breath and working on getting to access concentration, there is something comes up that, for example, physical sensation, like pain, for example, or intense kind of emotional or consistent you know, something that's kind of recycling or emotionally. I'm talking about kind of intense, either physical or emotional. Is it, do you shift your attention to that and kind of take care of this in some ways instead of just, okay, focusing on the breath, it comes up, label, come, come back, relax, back. So, and if this is keep persistently showing up. Yeah. So if something is persistent, I mean, the first, the first thing to do is just label, relax, come back. 
And you probably try that a few times, but something is persistently coming. Yeah, you're probably going to have to deal with it. It may be necessary to investigate. All right, what's going I, I sometimes find that, okay, I'm, a, I'm just restless in this sit and I'm not sure why. And I, it turns out I'm uncomfortable. You know, my back is bothering me. So I had to stop trying to just drop all the stuff and really take a, a deeper look. And it was just, I was just, it was in, uncomfortable and I had to switch my posture a bit and get resettled and then things worked better. If it's something emotional uh, coming up, something you're worried about, if it comes up repeatedly, then you may have to address it and just work with it in a way that you've yeah, worked with it, with Vipassana. If it's something that comes up repeatedly multiple times, you might give it a funny name, Petunia. When it comes, it's like, Petunia, look, this is not the time for you. Just take a break. We'll get back to you later. By giving it the funny name, you rob it of some of its power. People that are coming on a retreat and they just broke up with their significant other, you know, and they're upset about the end of this relationship. And every time he comes up, it's like, Petunia, no, this is not the time. We got other stuff to do and just set it aside. You want to keep setting these things aside as much as you can, but sometimes, yeah, they're just there and you can't set it aside. So you're stuck with, all right, let me, uh, let me uh, work with this as, as best I can.